And eventually I'm like, okay, snap out of it, Sky. Like, like you, I know you feel like hell, but you need to go and get your flight sorted. I walk outside, I look through my stuff and I realize they didn't print my boarding pass for my second flight. And so I'm like walking around, I'm like looking for the Hawaiian airport people. And I see someone, I go up to them and I'm like, hey, he was a cleaner. And I was like, hey, I don't have a boarding pass and my flight is in an hour. And he was like, what? And then he goes, oh, well, this airport's pretty much closed. Like there's no more flights being checked in. So you can't get a boarding pass. And he's like, I really don't know what to do for you. And then he's like, sorry. And I'm there dying and I'm just like, it's okay. Like, I don't know what, what, he, what I'm supposed to do. And then this other lady comes and she's like, oh, okay, you're going to have to walk 20 minutes that way to this desk and then they'll sort it out for you. I'm like, my flight is in an hour. It's boarding in like 10 minutes. And now I have to walk 20 minutes while I'm vomiting profusely every five minutes. I've got a minutes that way to get started on the process of getting my... Yeah, I ended up walking about 10 meters away from them, ready to take my 20 minute mission. And I dropped to the floor and start crying in the Hawaiian airport by myself, feeling so sick. I'm on my knees, all my bags have fallen. <laughs> damsel in distress there's like there's like not many people in this airport at all probably like 10 people were in my vision that I could see and I just dropped there and I start crying and I'm like I just don't know what to do I think I'm stuck in Hawaii I've got two more flights after this one it was horrid and then anyways the these airport people saw me and they all kind of helped me and I was like I'm sorry guys I'm just so nauseous I can't believe they still let me on the flight. Like I said to them, I was nauseous, but they, they were like, it's okay, we'll help you. They helped me wheel my bags and we went to my gate and we explained the dilemma and they managed to print out my boarding pass through a different computer. Don't know how they did it. I was like, great, thank you. Get on the Hawaiian flight and just pass out. But I will say though that Hawaiian people are cool. I did like talking to the Hawaiian people, even though I was crying and vomiting and distraught. They were friendly and lovely. <laughs> but also, what a story. And that's not even the, the like, depth of it. I really went on a journey getting back to Australia. And it's just so much funnier because I was by myself. Mahalo, they kept saying that, and I don't know what that means. They were like, Mahalo. Mahalo. Does that mean hi, or does it mean thank you? Thank God you got out of there. I know. Oh, and then, worst part, I had four flights to return home, and every gate that I was sitting at while I was waiting to board my flight, I fell asleep. Guys, I'm going to just explain this so you can vision it for yourselves there was this is in the hawaiian airport in the hawaiian airport no no i lie it was samoa i'm in samoa craziness i'm in samoa i'm standing at this gate that was not open yet and there's like 30 people just waiting out the front of this big gate that's like locked off by a full on sliding door. So it's completely locked off and all of us are waiting there because it was gate two and that's where our gate was for the flight. So there's so many people, there's so many suitcases. I'm like sitting against this wall and then I get up and I walk to the front. I literally, I don't even know what was going through my brain. I just remember I got all of my luggage and walked 10 meters forward so that I was in front of everybody. Everyone's got all their bags. I'm like in front of this big sliding door in front of all the ladies that were like about to check people in. And I just stand there, drop my bags down and I'm like this and I'm sleeping. Like I'm in my deepest REM sleep, squatting on the floor with all my suitcases around me. There's like 
probably more than 30 people all circling around me. I walked straight into the center. I think my brain was just on a different planet. And I was thinking, I don't want to miss the information, but I know I'm about to pass out. <laughs> so I walk all the way to the very center and just sit down and start sleeping. And then it was very embarrassing because the lady at the airport had to tap me and be like, do you mind moving over so we can get the people in wheelchairs through? And I wake up and I go, oh my God, yes, I'm so sorry. And I shuffle over to the side, pass out again. I'm dead, dead asleep, so tired. I guess all the people walk through, they walk past me, whatever. I get woken up a second time. There's no one else around me. Everybody's gone. Right? I'm at the front of this big group of people with all their suitcases. I fall asleep. I wake up the second time around and there's no one to be seen. I'm like, what is going on? This lady's waking me up and she's like, you need to board the plane. Are you catching the plane? And I was like, yes, I'm catching the plane. I was the last one to just like walk on the flight because I'm sleeping in front of everybody. That would have been so embarrassing i can just imagine everybody walking past me like is she all right <laughs> is she meant to be catching the flight they would have 100 percent thought i was homeless or something i don't know so embarrassing but i made it home in one piece <sighs> that's my story um but yeah thank god that they tapped me to check that i was um boarding the flight because I was like outside the gate like the sliding doors had opened and there was a whole seating area for the gate and I'm just some random girl sleeping in the middle of the airport like not even not even on a seat or rested up against a wall I'm like in the middle of the airport floor not even laying down literally crouching down and passed out on my palm of my hand like I've never been in that state of my life where I was that tired and that out of it. Usually if I'm feeling a bit sick, I can kind of just, you know, snap myself out of it and be like, all right, let's get back into the swing of things. But I really was just defeated. <laughs> Imagine if the plane left me. Imagine how long I would have been sleeping there for. Like just a young girl just sleeping on her suitcase in the middle of the airport as if no one took my stuff or anything like that. Crazy. But I am sad because I bought myself a Hawaiian magnet for my fridge and I lost it. I don't know where it is, but I lost it. So sad. Even though I was only in Hawaii for two hours, I consider that worthy of a magnet. So if I ever go to Hawaii again, I'll have to get two magnets because I have been to Hawaii. And I didn't get a magnet from Samoa, which I should have, 